don't know if my job is the easiest job or the hardest job of the day because I'm not really giving a presentation. I'm just giving thoughts really about how I felt about the day. Um, and the first thing I'd like to say is a big, great big thank you to the organisers for the day. Um, because it really has been an empowering day, I think, and an enabling day to give all of us a, a snapshot of the kinds of activities that are happening right across the community in, in Scotland. Um, one thing that intrigued me about the conference was the title of the conference, um, Scottish Community Heritage. And I was thinking to myself, well, why not heritages? And I think that probably comes from my own background, that for a number of years I was working in the Academy for Irish Cultural Heritages in Northern Ireland. But of course there we were making the point that different groups had different heritages which needed to be reconciled. Um, now heritages is a word we do not say easily, we usually say it in the singular, um, and probably, it, probably heritages would not be appropriate in this context, but just something to think about. Why do we always talk about it in the singular? Um, the conference, I think the cornerstone of the conference today has been to maximise participation from community groups. Um, and I think community groups really are a key factor in the whole heritage business. Let's see if I this right. Um, so one of the things I was thinking about is who are the heritage community or who is the heritage community? And we've had lots of pictures during the day about layers of soil. Um, so I was thinking also that maybe we have layers of community. Um, and at the core of heritage is the source community themselves. And that's really what we have been listening to today. The source communities themselves presenting their heritage. Um, the next layer I would consider those who consider heritage integral to their lifestyle, but are perhaps not members of the source community. Now, this is slightly simplistic, but you do know what I'm getting at. And the third layer might be scientists, academics, artists, people who work in partnership with the source community. And then we have the layer of the general public. And I think by doing this in a way, what I'm thinking about is the definition of heritage expertise. Because for many years it was the university people who were the experts, okay? In principle, in theory. They went out to the source community, collected the evidence, brought it back in and presented it. And they were the experts. Now, of course, we realize it's the source community themselves are the experts and the university people can actively collaborate with them and enhance that partnership but it's the source community themselves are the experts and i think that's what we have seen a lot of today the expertise of the source community themselves in managing their own heritage um, i would also say that this idea of the source community being the expert has been reinforced internationally in charters like the International Charter for Intangible Heritage, which talks about the source community themselves identifying their own heritage, managing their own heritage. And for countries that sign up to the charter, and the UK hasn't, but for countries that do, it's not the state that identifies the heritage that's to be protected, it's the source communities themselves. Um, what I would also say about the community, um, one of the more interesting aspects of today for me, and it's something I've always known, but still when you see it visually, it's very important, is this intergenerational mix in the community. I mean, sometimes people think heritage is about old folk, right? Well, we have seen today children actively enjoying heritage. Heritage is something for the young and the old, so it's not something for one group only. Um, and I think that's a message uh, that is getting across through the kind of partnerships we saw today where some projects were going into schools, actively engaging children in heritage activities. And this, I think, needs to be encouraged even more. Um, of course, when you're talking about heritage communities, um, you can have thick communities or thin communities. And by thick communities, I mean <laughs> communities with thick boundaries, very closely knit communities. Or you can have thinner communities where the boundaries are a little bit more fluid. 
Um, and creating a community always involves creating boundaries, inevitably. Because once you start including certain people, you're almost certainly excluding others. So I think we need to think about what kind of a community we have. But that leads to the question that was raised this morning. Do communities need to be representative? And really the issue is, you can never be totally representative. I mean, we had the example today of the nearly one horse for every family. But how representative is a three-legged horse? Um, so it's a question of, of striking a balance, I think, between what we can represent, what kind of community we are, and how welcoming we are. And I think um, one of the things that came across today is the whole relationship between community and heritage. And in a simple way, one might say, well, communities need their history and their identities and their heritage interpreted. And the heritage sector needs the people in communities to recognize the value of that heritage. So it's a kind of a dialectical relationship. And while things are not necessarily simply that black and white, there is kind of this relationship when we're talking about the public role of heritage or the community role of heritage. And that leads on to how heritage can contribute to social policy, group identity, belonging, etc. Uh, and this brings us back, in a sense, to the notion that it's the communities themselves should be defining that. Now, most of what we looked at today was about the past. And the issue was raised this morning of reclaiming ownership of a past which may have been taken over by the state. So reclaiming ownership of that past. And in one sense, maybe I've been talking about heritage rather than our heritages rather than heritage. Maybe I should also be talking about pasts in the plural rather than past. I mean, maybe we have different pasts, or we do have different pasts. At the same time, um, we had a very interesting stand today, which was looking at the question of whether Pontius Pilate was born in Perth. Um, and I think this raises the role of archaeology in helping us come to a past that is quite authentic. Okay, So it's not a past that is totally imagined or made up. It has that material culture to back up the past. At the same time, it's not necessarily a one-story past. It might be a multi-dimensional past, which archaeology can help to narrate in different ways. So cultural heritage is about the past. Well, it's about the past for the present and for the future. So uh, when we're talking about the past, it's not just because we'd like to know who our ancestors were or where we came from, which is all very exciting anyway, but it's also because we might like to know where we are going. And knowing where we came from might help us to know where we are going. So it's about a dynamic past, um, a past that has an authenticity, but a past that is also a guiding role for our future. And again, to stress the role of archaeology, uh, there's the dynamic bit, <laughs> um, and this is dynamic as well. It's also about um, finding our sense of place, finding our sense of place in the world, and that's what archaeology does. Um, and I think it's about finding our sense of place in many ways. Uh, the obvious way is finding our sense of place in the material world, or the material culture. But as we saw in a, a lot of the exhibits today, it's also about the stories that go with that sense of place, the memories that go with that sense of place, the, the potential that goes with that sense of place, the future that can be envisaged for that place. So it's about both the tangible and that horrible word, intangible heritage, or the tangible heritage, the material heritage, and the living heritage that goes with them. So archaeology has, is, is a very holistic concept because it's bringing both sides together. And so really, to sum up, for me at least, um, today has very much been about 
a sense of place and the role of communities themselves in defining their place and our place. And for me, as you know, a person who's just one year in Scotland, it has been a fantastic opportunity to see the kind of strong research that is going on in, among communities in Scotland. But I think it has also been very important to define the role of archaeology in narrating that sense of place, both from a past and for the future. So I'd like to begin where I started, really, with a great big vote of thanks for the organizers of this fantastic conference, which probably has been an immense learning opportunity for me, but also an enabling and an empowering opportunity for all of us. Thank you.